You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. I wanted a little on the sticky side. With a modest kitchen and some standard equipment, you can cook food that you would be proud to serve. There is my shrimp. All you need is a few helpful kitchen techniques, the ability to follow a recipe, a passion for food, and a fascination with cooking. Just follow along the rib cage. That is so good. My name is Dennis. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I want to return today to one of my favorite cookbooks. This one here, Southern Italian Cooking by Joe Batoha. I'm laughing because I think of this as a puzzle book. What she did was the author went around to the stately homes and mansions of Italy and persuaded many of the household cooks into sharing with her some of their favorite recipes. Evidently, they just simply recited them from memory as best they could remember how they were made. She wrote everything down and then published everything in a cookbook without testing anything. So a lot of these recipes, they don't work. And that's the puzzle book part of it. You have to read through the recipes and try to figure out what's supposed to happen and how can you make these work? Because once the problems are solved, these, deli these dishes are delicious. I love some of this stuff and that's what I want to do today is I want to make this recipe that is rigatoni with a pork ragu. If you're not familiar with ragu, it's a chunky sauce whereas like marinara is a smooth sauce. But here's one of the puzzle parts about this recipe. You don't make a lot of sauce but she calls for a tablespoon of fennel seed. A tablespoon. That just seems like an awful lot of spice to me for a a medium sized pot of sauce. So I'm going to reduce that right away. I'm going to reduce that down to one teaspoon and I may not use all of that. So let's start making this rigatoni with pork ragu by making the pork ragu first. I want to start off by browning my pork. So I'm going to put a few tablespoons of cooking olive oil, what I call cooking olive oil. This is not extra virgin olive oil. It's pure olive oil. This pan is heating over medium, medium high heat. And I've got some pork shoulder here that I've cubed into about one inch cube, two and a half centimeters. This is a pound and a half or about 1.1 kilograms of pork pieces. And I trimmed these to get rid of most of the fat. So I just want to brown these. These don't have to be cooked all the way through because later on they're going to be cooked in the sauce for a long time, a nice slow cooking time. My meat now is lightly browned. It doesn't have to be too dark. You can see it's got some nice browning on there. I'm going to add one half cup of dry red wine. I'm going to bring this up to the boil, reduce the heat to medium low, and I want to simmer this until pretty near all of that wine is evaporated. While my liquid there is reducing, I want to prep another couple of meats to go in the pan. The recipe calls for a quarter pound, 110 grams of pancetta. This is pancetta. And what I also happen to have in the refrigerator is some prosciutto. I'm going to put this in the recipe as optional. This is three ounces, 85 grams roughly, of prosciutto. I'm going to chop both of these up and then fry these to go into my sauce. Pancetta is a Italian bacon that does not have the hickory smoke flavor that American bacons have. So it's got a different flavor to it. And it chops up, as you can see, really easily. I'm going to use this to transfer it, my bench scraper.
And this does have to be cooked to eat. Prosciutto is ready to eat. This is, as I mentioned, three ounces, about 85 grams, but it's got a lot of fat on it. And so I like to fry prosciutto for a recipe like this so I can rend some of that fat. This is thinly sliced prosciutto. Most often it's sold that way. Occasionally I buy it in chunks and I do have a chunk in my freezer, but I wanted to use up this sliced prosciutto. Okay, this is ready now to saute. So there's my pork again. You can see that liquid is pretty much all gone. So I'm going to turn this heat off and transfer this off the stove and next start working with the prosciutto and the pancetta. I've got my Dutch oven here, my large Dutch oven. Heating over medium high heat. I don't need to use as much oil here because the pancetta and the prosciutto will yield some fat. And I'm going to just fry these briefly. I'll start to see them brown and shrivel up quite a bit, which is fine. I do want to brown that pancetta, but not like you would brown bacon to get it really crisp. This will take a few minutes. My meat here now is just starting to brown. You can see I'm starting to get some fond in the bottom of the pan. When people have asked me, how do I get my Dutch oven white when it starts to get brown like that? Just mix a little bit of bleach and some water. Pour it in there, let it sit for a while, an hour or two. It'll be all white. Now I'm going to add a quarter cup that's about 60 milliliters of that same red wine. And I'm going to reduce that down so it's pretty near all evaporated. I have some more prep work to do here. What I have here is a medium onion. It's about 10 ounces, 285 grams. And I'm going to finally chop this you've seen my other videos, you know I have my own way of chopping onions. I don't do it the way the chefs on TV typically do it. They always cut down through and then cut toward their fingers. I don't like drawing a knife toward my fingers. So I quarter it and then going part way down, not all the way toward the end. I put my slits in. Like so. Bring it back together again. And then cut across so that my knife is always going down toward the cutting board, not toward my fingers. I got my other half to do here and I'll be ready to work with my sage. I have some fresh sage here that I've been keeping in water. I need about 10 leaves here. That's that six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then I want to chop this up pretty fine. I love fresh sage in dishes. You can use, if you don't have fresh sage in the stores where you live, you can use sage from the spice jar. But if I can use fresh sage, I always try to. Any fresh herbs. We have a nice collection here in the store. A 
All right, that should be good enough there. Transfer that to a bowl. And then I can deal with my fennel seeds. This is another of the joys of living in Southern California. I often brag about walking up to my neighbor's yard and picking lemons off of her lemon tree, even in the middle of January, February. This jar is all fennel seeds. Fennel grows all over the place here in Southern California. This came from the lot next door. There's an empty lot next to the trailer park. I walked over there one summer, got a bunch of fennel seeds. You do have to heat them up in the oven. Get them maybe up to 275 degrees. If there's any bug eggs in there, by getting these well heated up, you don't have to worry about those eggs hatching and then your fennel seeds being full of bugs later on. So this is harvested fennel seed from right next door. So I'm not gonna use a tablespoon of this stuff. Maybe a teaspoon. I have here a coffee grinder, coffee mill that I use solely for grinding up herbs. I'm gonna put a scant teaspoon of fennel seed in there. And then grind it up. There's not a lot in there to grind up really well, but if I kind of shake it around and kind of pulse it, I can eventually get those seeds ground up pretty fine. There is my ground fennel. That looks like a lot to me. I'm probably only going to use half of that. The wine now, as you can see, has reduced. So now I want to return my browned meat. To the pan with any juices that have collected in the bottom of that skillet. If those pieces look big, I have a pretty good feeling that they're going to break down a lot during the cooking. Now, there's my chopped onion going in. This is one six ounce can of tomato paste. You want to know how to get it out of that can really nicely. Just open the top and bottom of your can and then just shake it out. I also have here a, oh by the way, six ounce can, that's 170 grams of that tomato paste. I have a 28 ounce can, about 800 grams of Italian plum tomatoes with their juice. That can go in there. This is my fennel seed. I'm only going to put half of that in there. If you're not familiar with fennel seed, it has the same aroma as licorice. And you could, if you wanted to, you could use a half a teaspoon of, or even a teaspoon of anise extract. There's my fresh sage going in. And I'm going to put in three or four bay leaves there. Bring my heat up. And I'm going to add enough water here to come up about three quarters of the way up that meat. Push my bay leaves down inside. Get everything down in that liquid. I'm going to partially cover this reduce the heat to low and simmer this for three hours and I'll check it every 30 minutes or so and if it looks like the liquid is starting to run dry, get a little low, I will add some more water to the pot. So now here it is after three hours of cooking. I 
turned the speed off a little while ago. You can see how wonderfully thick that sauce is. I did add water to this about a cup. What is that? About 240 milliliters. I added it maybe halfway through the cooking. Remember those big chunks of meat? Where are they now? There's a few in there, but not very many. There's one there. Most of these, most of those chunks have broken down into smaller pieces. So you don't have to worry about big, huge pieces of meat. They will break down, but you can see how chunky that is. That's what makes that a ragu. Now I need to taste it for salt. So I have my red handle tasting spoon here. Boy, that doesn't need hardly any. I'm going to leave the salt out. I'm going to leave the salt out. I think it's getting the salt from the prosciutto. I am going to grind some black pepper in there, though. And then this can be done as far as making the sauce. This can be made a day in advance, put in the refrigerator after it's had a chance to cool. It's always better the next day anyways. So the next thing to do is to cook up my pasta and then put this together for serving. I'm ready now to start cooking the pasta. I'm going to use rigatoni for this. This is a one pound box, 454 grams. As soon as this is cooked and drained, which is going to take 12 to 13 minutes, we'll be ready to start assembling our dish. I'm ready to start assembling my dish here. I'm going to put a ladle of sauce in the bottom of that. Here is my cooked rigatoni. <laughs> I love pasta. And then I'm going to put some sauce on that. Plenty of sauce. Like so. You can mix that in. Doesn't that look beautiful? Let's take a moment to talk about some serving options here. One of the recommendations is to put some of the sauce in the bottom of a large casserole dish and then put about half a pound, 227 grams of ricotta cheese into the sauce, mix it up, put some of the sauce in with the rigatoni and add the other half a pound of ricotta cheese to that mixture, mix that all up put that in the casserole dish and then finally top it with some sauce. I like that idea. I really like ricotta cheese in sauce. It gives it a, a different sort of a flavor. It's sort of like adding cream to a sauce. It changes the flavor. That's optional, the ricotta cheese. I'm going to do it today as just the sauce and the rigatoni, but keep in mind that you can add, if you want, as an option, about a pound of ricotta cheese to this dish. You want to put that on the table with a serving spoon. Put some cheese on the table. That's some freshly grated Romano cheese. You can use Parmesan. And then what I have here is also some extra sauce. I've been keeping warm in a little pot. I like this pot because I can take the handle off and put this on the table and it looks nice on the table. So we are ready to plate and see what this tastes like. And to plate this, you just need to just spoon this into plates, let your guests put sauce on and cheese. It's really simple. I have my little Italian bowl here that I like for pasta. You can see how chunky that sauce is. That is a ragu. And you can also see that the meat didn't end up in big chunks with three hours of cooking. It broke up a little bit. Beautiful. 
I'm going to use my fingers rather than tongs. Put some cheese on there. And if I wanted to, I could have put a little extra sauce on there from my little serving pot. That's it. I'm ready to see what that tastes like. I thought it was interesting on the side of this rigatoni box. They have a recipe that's very similar to the one that I'm making right now. Or that I did make. And I'm ready to taste. Ah, oh, this looks... I love pasta. Anything Italian. Mmm. It's a nice, rich, savory sauce, but that pork is just melting in your mouth tender. The rigatoni is cooked al dente. Okay, excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my rigatoni and pork ragu. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, Visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.